If I had to start Cal settings all over again, I'd actually be devastated. Having to go through the years of countless trials and errors, falling countless of times on the instant and embarrassing myself. That's something I definitely don't want to go through again. But if I had to start all over again, here's the four things I do more often. So the first thing that I would do is specialize in two skills instead of one. So when it came to my training in the early days, all I cared about was unlocking the handstand pushup. But before I even started about going about that training, I had to get down the handstand, which wasn't an issue. I actually trained the handstand about three to five times per week consistently. This actually helped me get a better understanding of knowing how to better balance my body whenever I'm kicking up into the handstand, whether it's onto the wall or without and also building up the necessary shoulder strength and wrist strength to hold myself in a handstand position. But here's the issue. In terms of what I did in that year or two, that was all I did, right? I specifically just trained that one skill, the handstand and progressing to the handstand pushup. At least on a consistent basis, I would attempt a couple skills here and there, but going back to my point, this definitely led to some pros and cons. But let's talk about the obvious con. I would have had one additional strong skill at the same level of the handstand pushup strength that I'm at right now to this day. So for example, if I would have trained like the front lever the same time I started the handstand and handstand pushup journey, I probably would have gone to the point where I can do like front lever pull-ups for a rep or two. Similar to that, my current handstand level of strength is like doing 90 degree handstand push-ups or multiple freestanding handstand push-ups with like extended range of motion. So it's not too far fetched to say that I can do front lever pull-ups because that means I would have had like four to five years of specific front lever and handstand push-up training. But here's the pro to just doing one skill. It actually gave me the mental clarity and capacity to just focus on that one particular task. Rather than spreading myself too thin and trying to accomplish multiple tasks all at the same time, that just would not be feasible. As a beginner in anything actually, this can apply to life, it's more useful to be more tunnel vision as you're starting because that way, there's a more clear and defined action item that you can focus on, all while minimizing the risk of duplicating your efforts and never seeing progress at all. But here's the thing that I now know that I wish that I would have understood earlier. The handstand and front lever training would have actually been complementary to my efforts. And that's simply because the handstand is a more push focus movement because you're working your shoulders, triceps and chest to some degree. And then also the front lever is a more back or pulling focus movement because you're focused more so on your back, your lats, your, your biceps, your forearms. So these would not really hinder my ability to recover from each skill within a specific session or on a week to week basis because a lot of pro bodybuilders, a lot of people in general, typically superset antagonist muscle groups. Meaning if you're doing a push movement, you can superset that with a pull movement and not incur any uh, accumulated fatigue that's going to linger on to your next set or the next day, right? This is all to essentially just better save and maximize your time and efforts, which actually leads on to my next point. I should have gotten more coaching and advice from somebody who's already done what I've done, but for the extended period of time. Now, keep in mind, when I started Calisthenics, I actually had a mentor from the first like two to three months, and this helped me pretty much get down the standard technique and form of the basic movements because we would pretty much train every week. And he would allow me to ask questions and have him just give me any feedback to help my overall training. And as a newbie in anything, this is probably the most efficient route. There is merit in learning things on your own, but when you have the guidance of someone who's already done what you've been trying to accomplish, it's a real life shortcut, a real hack. Something like a five to 10 minute conversation about your training can literally take up to weeks for you to figure out all on your own, which is exactly why I'm hosting free 15 minute consultation calls where you can ask me any questions regarding your calisthenics journey. And I'll give you actionable advice, a step-by-step -step process that would actually help and progress your journey, such as the best progression exercises to incorporate, a step-by-step -step plan to start weighted calisthenics and strength programming and more. So if you're interested, feel free to check the pinned comments so we can chat. Then on to my third point of this video is that I wish I didn't attempt to learn every single push-up variation out there and instead focus on just one specific variation that best leads me to my goals. 
Yes, I was a victim of push-up hopping where I would literally see a new push-up exercise on YouTube and just add it to my training with no real research and understanding of the exercise itself. I just figured the more push-up variations I could do, the stronger I will be with moving my body, which is far from the truth. Now remember guys, I wanted to learn handstand push-up. So that means I should have just focused on push-up variations that allow me to specifically train for learning the handstand push-up. This can include like once I get down to basic 20 to 30 rep push-ups, I will move on to the pike push-ups, then elevated pike push-ups, and then the handstand push-ups on the wall. It's a very clear defined path to the push-ups. But instead what I was doing was I would do like weighted push-ups, archer push-ups, wide grip push-ups, you know, just different push-up variations that never really was specific to my ultimate end goal, right? My ultimate push-up goal itself which is the handstand push-ups if i would have known that from the jump i promise you i would have definitely mastered the handstand push-up way earlier than what it originally took me now moving on to my final point of this video i honestly wish that i had taken more planned recovery weeks or delo weeks early on to my training career in a nutshell a recovery week or delo week is where you plan a week where you're just reducing the intensities Right, and this can be done in several ways. You can reduce the actual working loads that you're using, whether it's like changing from one progression to an easier progression, or you can reduce the volume. So you can cut the number of sets, the number of reps, or even the overall training frequency, the amount of times so you go to the gym and work out per week. Right, you wanna pretty much just reduce what you've been doing prior. This right here is so underrated. I don't think people understand how important it is to dial it back from your training. I used to think at least if I didn't train hard for like a week or two, I'd lose strength, progress, or slightly regress as if I'm missing out from something. But in reality, if all you're doing is training hard at high intensities all the time, that's going to eventually lead to a decrease in performance because you accumulated a whole lot of fatigue. Now, it may not catch up as quick as you would think, depending on how close you can gauge yourself to train to failure. But if you keep going about training hard at high intensities, you know, for months on months on end, then it's going to eventually catch up to you. You're going to definitely hit a plateau. You're going to hit a wall. You're going to feel you're so weak. You can't muster any strength. You can't essentially activate your muscles at 100 percent which will lead to for sure, um, not, not just injuries, but overall decrease in your performance in the gym. Think of it this way, all right? Whenever you go to the gym, you're working out, let's say you're doing pull-ups, you're tearing those muscle fibers within the lats and the respective muscle groups that you're training. And what allows you to build muscle is whenever you recover, right? You rest for perhaps eight to 10 hours, you go to sleep, and then you rest for maybe another day. And that's gonna essentially allow you to rebuild those torn down muscle fibers but here's what's different between allowing yourself to get a full rest week you're giving your body aka your brain the recovery needed to reduce the accumulated fatigue because the more fatigue and more tension you're putting on your body the less likely you are to recruit the motor units right the motor units are essentially a very scientific term of how much power you can generate and exert on a particular exercise. So what you wanna do is allow your brain to recovery too, because your brain is what's essentially gonna be sending those signals to whatever muscles that you're trying to utilize on a particular exercise. So if you can't activate your back muscles at 100%, then your pull-ups are gonna feel weaker. And then that's gonna cause like a psychological response in your own brain to be like, yo, am I getting weak? And then you're gonna be like, yo, am I losing muscle if you keep going down that same path of not recovering. Anyway, I don't want to go too deep into it. I actually made a whole video on the problem with training to failure. Definitely recommend y'all to check it out. And I kind of go into detail about, you know, the nuances of what happens when you don't train to failure, what happens when you do train to failure, when you can manage your intensities, take your deload weeks and recovery weeks, all that good stuff. Make sure y'all check it out. But hey, what do I know? If you want to see more content like this, be sure to follow me, man. I'm the Tough Fitness Guy out here. No cap. Cobra trains. He's up next. Make sure y'all subscribe to him. He's number one out here. He's the toughest fitness guy out here.